Howdy there, folks, and welcome back to the Regia Marina, the Navy that almost was. I am currently running a massive deficit as I'm trying to build massive shipyards. We are barely keeping up with crew training. We have a very poorly trained Navy. We have some successes thus far in that we control Tripoli and Cyprus, which I still can't believe we took. Um, it is 1908, 1908. That is where we are. Now, we are not in a state of perilous uh, intergovernmental inter problems. Not yet. We are refitting 138 destroyers, which is going to be very expensive. Extremely expensive. Exporto, no. You are going to be limited. And we are slowly building up our fleet. We do have the Wide Tom class, and we have many more ships being commissioned right now they're doing commissioning and fitting out this is where you make sure that they are ready a lot of people don't get this but ships are not like uh tanks ships are not like cars cars leave the factory pretty much ready to go sure you might need to change the oil a few times sure you might need to do a test drive or two sure you might need to do some work before they go to the you know sales floor Ships require a lot of work to be ready for military service. These things are not turnkey. So they will go to the Navy in question, and then they will get all sorts of shakedowns, and they will, they will have the crew train on it, and then they'll send it out and see what breaks, and then they will fix it, and then they will maybe do about eight or nine series of change orders on the ship just to make sure the fucker works. And it is a bastard, but it is how you make sure that these things last forever. The problem is also each of these ships is made by hand. They each have individual defects. So you will find so many of these vessels that are not ready to go when they are made. They are not ready to go at all when they are made. They are essentially a work in progress for their whole lives. Um... You'll find ships frequently go back to the dockyard, and uh, <laughs> for a lot of reasons. In the last few years, an American cruiser went around the world. I think it spent something like 220, 270 days at sea. And when you see that thing coming in, um, you realize how horribly corroded and beat up it is. And a lot of people go, oh my god, didn't they take care of it out at sea? Yes, they did. They took as good care of it as they could. The sea is unforgiving, and a lot of people don't understand how dangerous the ocean can be. The ocean is incredibly dangerous. It is flexing the hull every second you're underway. It is beating the shit out of you with every wave, and it does not care. The ocean is old man ocean. Old man ocean wants you dead, and it will, it will do everything in its power to make sure you stay out of it. Salt water is only the beginning of your problems, and you'll find that, you know, nothing holds up. Also, a lot of people don't know this, but naval paint is its own mysterious and terrible issue. You typically have two paints on a ship. You have top coat, which is anything out of the water, but is still going to get sprayed by it. And then you have the hull paint, which the reason why it's the color it is, even though I don't see color... The reason why the bottom of a ship is red-orange is because it is a copper-based paint to be a biocide versus barnacles and all sorts of other things that stick on the ship. You don't want those on there, and frequently ships need a period of running under speed while cruising around just to break shit off the bottom. You'll find ships do this frequently, and any ship that spends any amount of time in the water when it comes into the dockyard is going to be just festooned with sea life. Also, I just was slightly belligerent toward the Austro-Hungarian Empire just a bit. I I was just a little bit belligerent, but I mean, it's Austro-Hungary. I, I don't know which Habsburg I made mad, but probably all of them. I'm probably going to have to fight them just for primacy over the Aegean and the Ionian Sea, which is what I figured. It's just what they do. They're, they're, they're belligerent, so we're going to need to do our best. Now, the fancy class is all right, but I built as many of them as I intend to. I'm going to slowly start overhauling my older battleships. Ships get overhauled frequently, the dreadnoughts especially. 
And I kind of like this design, even though it has a lot of weight on the front, it does its best. I dated a girl who had a lot of weight on the front and it worked out, so it can work out here too. Let's go ahead and put some auxiliary engines in here and we're gonna put in turbines. Ooh, fancy. So we're gonna upgrade this guy, the Wide Tom, and we are going to put some more things in it. We're gonna improve its armor scheme generally, and we're gonna move toward Picric Acid that's a little bit better designed for actual handling of the munitions, meaning it's not going to corrode through the casing and cause all sorts of problems. I won't have as many ammunition handling oopsie doodles. And I freed up about a thousand tons of weight to play with. Now, any sane person would be putting this into anything else. I'm not. I'm going to do what I can to make the belt even thicker because that makes the enemy shells have to work harder. And that's kind of important. So the main deck, the fore belt and the aft belt, that's up here, back here, and then the main deck, is quite thick. Thick with like four C's. The superstructure is three inches, which means anything short of like heavy cannon fire is not even going to dent the funnel. Why did I do this? Because it's funny. That's why I did it. There, you have my answer. Still only going to do 22 knots, but it's going to do 22 knots more efficiently. The problem is, is I'm now re-engining a battleship. Some of you are going to say, how do you re-engine a battleship, Tex? Well, you have to cut this thing apart. You have to do open heart surgery. You're not going to, you know, uh, Lego a battleship apart. These things are not designed to be disassembled. They're like, all right, it's done. Yeah, it's going to take a bit. So I have the wide tom under refit, which is going to take a bit of ship or dockyard capacity. And then I'm going to do the same. I'm going to do the same refits for my other battleships. Turbines allow me to make energy more efficiently because instead of having to push against pistons and get them spinning, I can keep a turbine at a constant RPM and then I can use that uh, power in multiple ways. Also, I haven't forgotten that we did take some territory away from people. We do have Italian Gibraltar, which is hilarious. And we also, or sorry, we have Italian Gibraltar, which is pretty great, you know, and we also have Italian Cyprus, but the Austro-Hungarian Empire has actually extended to control all of Ukraine. They're probably going to gobble up Romania next, perhaps Bulgaria. However, the Ottoman Empire is starting to push into Rumelia and across the Bosphorus. So we're going to get some interesting developments. Looks like China is under the control of Chiang Kai-shek. I believe that is the Chinese nationalist government flag. Without looking, I'm just going to guess. Spain is still somehow a global sea power which I haven't figured that out. Uh, Spain is probably one of the hardest people to fight uh, in terms of running the game. They're the, probably the most challenging start because they have holdings forever and everywhere and they have to build a global navy from the get-go. Looks like Ireland is uh, independent, save for Northern Ireland. And you have essentially a British Commonwealth, I believe. I need to go look at their government to make sure they are now a democracy, not a monarchy anymore. And they are reeling from the last slap fight I gave them, which is good because, you know, that's what they get. So far, I'm staying out of most people's problems. Uh, looks like the United States may decide to become belligerent. And I, fine, bring it. Bring it. I'm going to be as annoying as possible as Italy. That is my, that is my main goal here. So we're going to go into our finances and we're going to slowly up this crew training thing uh, to about, yeah. And we're going to try to train a crew that is uh, mostly competent across multiple ships. I also wonder what's going to happen with the rest of the world, but we'll see. Looks like the Austro-Hungarian Empire is indeed trying to size me up slowly. So I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to start the fight. I'm not going to start the fire, as it were, but I'm going to research more into explosives, which is the same thing. Now, the wine toms are being rebuilt, and the Sforza are uh, certainly next on my list to be rebuilt. Uh, these are pretty cool ships, and I like that these are faster speed. I'm going to probably try to build um, a successive series of dreadnoughts in order to make them incredibly lethal. 
uh, as best I can in order to gain and maintain control of this sea. But I should probably build, I think, two more of the Sforza class. So I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to build two more, and I'm going to base those guys. Uh, I'm going to base those guys in Cyprus because I can, right? That's that's what we should do. We should we should put those guys in other ports. Actually, can I? I don't think I can because they're not <laughs> they're not a. Uh, I don't think I have deep water ports for them there. Because we've got Limassol, yeah, it's 16,000 tons, not really. So I'm going to take advantage of the massive uh, anchorage at La Spezia right there just to keep building my ships. So if we look at our fleet comp, um, we have, it's, it's going to take 17 months to build more of those. And that's relatively fast. We just finished overhauling the wide toms, which is good, which means I could probably add two more battleships to my build which is good. We have now entered the Dreadnought race, and the Dreadnought race is absolutely bonkers. You have lots and lots of navies just going, I need Dreadnoughts. They don't care about anything else. It is the yardstick of the era. It is the nuke of its time. They are the most destructive devices on planet Earth in the early teens. So these are the strategic projection yardsticks. This keeps your navy sovereign and it keeps other countries out of your backyard. The threat of battleships and dreadnoughts is so great that they basically serve more or less for their entire design life as fleets in being. They just have to sit there and look really, really scary. And that's good enough. That is good enough. I'm going to put, you know what, I'm going to build them all at the same yard. That should, that should really make people up there happy. They'll have plenty of work. Everyone can share their work. It'll be, it'll be a fine time. But if you look at the number of Dreadnoughts made from their inception, HMS Dreadnought, to the era of Super Dreadnoughts, which in America, you know, you start seeing the New York class and stuff like that. When you look at that whole period prior to the Washington Naval Treaty of 1922, you realize why that treaty needs to exist because things were getting bonkers. And by the end, you start having people trying to figure out how to build stuff that is effectively impervious to weapons. Tillman planned battleships, for instance, had feet of armor. And there's a reason why we didn't make them. There probably wasn't enough steel in the world to do it. It's it's kind of fun to look at naval architecture through this period, because if you thought interwar tanks were weird, you have no idea what navies tried. The fact that something like the Yamato and the Musashi got made is insane. That is not something that would have happened in a sane world, but they made them all the same. And those are the ones that were made. We can laugh at the idea of building super capitals that have very limited effect and are certainly 10 years behind the, the scene, as it were, before uh, World War II. Because, yeah, while well, super capital battleships are neat, uh, aircraft carriers are a lot more efficient in being able to deliver ordnance to target. That being said, while people will mock the Japanese for building these things, Everyone planned to build them. The crowds had the H-Plan battleships, which were all insane huge. I will say this as an American, and you can certainly say this is my biases, the Montana class that we prepared to make was the most reasonable of the super battleships because it was just an Iowa class that was a little bit bigger. That was it. It was just... Take what we got that we know works and make it a little bit bigger. And that was sane. When you start looking at the stuff that the Krauts were building, you end up with these giant, giant battleships that are so big that they would require redesign and redredging of canals to launch. When you have to change the earth to build your ships, you have a problem. <laughs> 
And everyone planned to build bonkers warships in this time. Everyone had a lot of crazy ideas. And it's just like it is with tanks, where no one knows what the next war may bring. No one knows what the next lessons are. So everyone comes up with the same ideas. Everyone comes up with a, but what if? But what if? But what if? And this idea is sometimes sane. But mostly not, because naval shipbuilding is just as crazy as any other macro-scale engineering projects where somebody gets an idea, and they get it in their head that it's a great idea, and then a lot of people start going, um, where are you going to get all that steel? Where are you going to get all those bolts? Where are you going to get all of those parts? Where are you going to get things? And the architect goes, no, you don't understand my vision. And they start doing some... Real Frank Lloyd Wright stuff, but instead of it being really pretty, like Frank Lloyd Wright, it starts being a nightmare. You end up with ships that are just, why? And a really prime example of why you should never let naval architects just build whatever the fuck they want. Uh, there's this ship. Oh god, I may have to fight Britain again. There is this ship that was made in the Age of Sail uh, called the Vasa, which is a Swedish ship that is exceptionally ornate. It is known for being beautiful and gorgeous and pretty and peerless and encrusted with all of the finest workmanship. It has everything that is the very best. And then it just rolls over and sinks because they hadn't figured out some of the basics like ballast. <laughs> they were just like, make it pretty. Naval architects need an engineer with them who goes, how are you going to make that? Nobody makes that that big. There is no design study on this. How is this going to be braced? How structurally will this hold up? Because any ship can look great at port. Then you put it in the ocean, and the ocean will take your ship hole and bend it like a baguette, and it will beat the shit out of it with waves, and it will break it in a hundred different ways. Man, I was on such a good term with Great Britain, and they just knocked off so many points. You know what? Fuck you guys. You guys want to throw down, we're going to throw down. You and me and everyone else, we're going to have ourselves a, a contest on the ocean. And the contest is, who owns Gibraltar? And the answer is me. I own Gibraltar. I'm also going to use my high-low. I'm going to uh, attack Britain with as many disposable boats as possible. Even though I've started to make uh, destroyers that are really not that disposable. I've started to make destroyers that are actually quite difficult to um, quite difficult to replace should something happen, which may be a flaw in my doctrine. Again, I'm not trying to say that I know better in these cases of naval design because hubris can affect everyone. As soon as somebody looks back with a lens and goes, I'm the smartest, they're wrong. As soon as somebody goes, well, I won't make their mistakes, they are well on their way to making new mistakes. So keep that in mind. Now, some will say that rule is excessive, and I agree. It is terrible. But don't worry. I'll make it worse. These are very reinforced destroyers, I want to say. All right. Uh, yep, yep. We got turbines. Still rolling coal. Picric acid is fine. We're going to put better range finders on it. We have radio range finding. We're going to make these things excellent mine layers and excellent mine sweepers because that's badass. Uh, putting the bigger torpedoes on it. And let's see if we can't bump its speed to like 33 knots. Yes, we can. Can we bump it to 34 knots? Yes, we can. 35 knots. Nope, that's too many. That's too many. 34 knots in decent range. So, I now have destroyers that I can use to sally out. I can roll out from my little port over there at Gibraltar. And I can go just straight for their fucking ports. I can just go right in and day one launch as many fucking torpedoes into their backyard. I also need to design a successive destroyer class. If you want to look at destroyers of this era, they're typically very bad. Um, they typically don't see very well. Uh, they don't. They don't the ocean good. They do the ocean real bad. A really good example is America's first destroyer, which I believe is the Bainbridge. Um, and in order to send it to the Far East, the Philippines. 
it had to go from the East Coast to San Juan to the Azores to, I believe it was Algeria. Then it had to go to, um, it had to go to Egypt, had to go to Aden, it had to go to Bombay, and then it finally made its last leg to the Philippines. They left in December and they arrived in April. A destroyer, the fastest ship we had. Early destroyers are not that great. They are very limited in range. They require a lot of repair after running at flank. And while they are quick, they are quick in the way a Maserati is quick. They are very good for a very brief time. They, they have power, but not a lot of power. They don't have a lot of staying power. They're going to require a lot of maintenance. Early destroyers are a nightmare. And we have reached that era. So re-engineering all these ships is going to take a fortune, which as you can see is $60 million in 1909 money per turn, or that should be per month. And so we are going to be probably fairly dead-ass broke if this takes too long. I will then need to build a successive generation of destroyers to pair with a successive generation of battleships. But first, I must understand how to get bigger fucking guns on things. Ideally, I need to build something fairly quickly that is in the neighborhood of like a Bayern class. That would be a German or a KMS, Kriegsmarine Schiff, um, Imperial German fleet from World War I. Uh, the Bayern was a fairly modern design and it is effectively a super dreadnought. I'm going to build something that is like that. That is my idea, is to build something like a Bayern, except I, being a Mediterranean power, can concentrate on making something that is not uh, a global response ship. I don't have to worry about range so much. Looks like Austro-Hungary is frowning on me. Uh, Britain is slowly souring on me. The Spaniards are improving their attitude, so I'm going to go tell... Good old Habsburg to take it on the chin. Get it? Because the Habsburg chin. All right. Sorry. We're going to now try to concentrate on big guns. And then I'm also going to try to concentrate on hull construction a little bit. Because I would like some quality control in my naval construction plans. Because we don't really have that. And as soon as these next four battleships are out, I have to refit them immediately. I have to bring them up to the new standard. Which is a son of a bitch. But it, eh, ah, it happens. Okay, Austro-Hungarian Empire is sad face, which is what they do. Um, they can't help it. Again, Habsburgs. But uh, they they are probably not going to like me so much. Yes, I am aware there is a Habsburg on Twitter. Please do not send him this video. <laughs> He's probably going to go, I'm at least cool, and then I will frown because he probably pretty much is. Um, <laughs> he probably falls asleep and makes more money than I will make in my life. So take my kvetching with a uh, grain of salt. All right, so I need to beat the fuck out of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. And the problem is, is uh, I have no idea what their fleet comp is. I do not see. Let's see. They have 82 ships, 12 battleships, 50 heavy cruisers, 7 light cruisers, and 13 torpedo boats. So they went very top heavy, which is an interesting strategy. Uh, you can do that if you're an industrial power. He's not. So this, this is going to be very painful for him should I inflict casualties. Again, you can have a great navy on paper, but if you don't have sufficient RSO, repair service overhaul capacity... You lose. Because you can build this majestic navy. You can buy a navy many times the size of the navy you can actually operate. You can buy a vast navy, and then as soon as a few years in, you'll find you lack the expertise to work on ships, you lack the equipment to repair them, and you lack the dockyard space to maintenance stuff. And that is where you can lose, especially when you fight a belligerent neighbor who has designed his navy to cause as many casualties as possible in the shortest amount of time, a.k.a. my navy. So my objective is going to be like a dachshund. I'm going to come around the corner and I'm going to bite their ankles. 
and I'm going to do it with a fuckload of torpedo boats. I'm going to keep shooting torpedoes at them until everything sinks. I'm going to try to repeat the sinking of the St. Istvan, which effectively signals the end of Austro-Hungarian naval ideas. Germany and China are fighting, which is interesting. And the Netherlands wants to buy a battleship. Interesting. Um, what? The Austro-Hungarians' attack on India caused a major disturbance. What did my army do? What is my army doing in India? Wait, that's not my army. That's their army. What, are the, what is their army doing in India? What is the Austro-Hungarian army doing in India? They don't like goulash, I don't think. And before I get comments from some Indian guy going like, Ah, oh, how dare you? I mean, they, they adopted cricket. Maybe they like goulash. I don't know. Is it weird to think that in these games, these strategy games, when I conquer uh, cultures and what have you, I, I think about cultural assimilation and what kind of weird food, like food you would get, what fusion food you would get. So imagine like Austro-Hungarian Indian food. So you have like spätzle and goulash and curry. Actually, spätzle with curry sauce would be probably pretty good. Oh, cool. My government is now run by nationalists. Eh, that's fine. All right, I just told China to fuck off. Uh, Chiang Kai-shek was probably like, our Navy's cool, right? My guy said, Lamau, no. Austro-Hungary is on the cusp of becoming unfriendly, so I'm going to just go ahead and make that happen. Uh, because it, sometimes you just got to pull that Band-Aid. <laughs> I'm starting to get into better armor and better equipment and soon in two and three months respectively i will have four more battleships which shall tilt the balance of power i will actually be able to say that i have pure tonnage versus the enemy now when you judge navies a lot of people will look at numbers they will say oh this is a 600 ship navy this is a 300 ship navy don't do that that is stupid Instead, look at displaced tonnage. If I build 100 rowboats, I can say I have a 100-ship navy. However, if you look at my displaced tonnage, it's not going to be that much. And versus somebody with a destroyer, I would be grossly outtunned in my naval displacement. That's how you judge navies. How many tons in the water? How many ships? And you're making a, several assumptions, naturally, that it's all the same. But... I'm going to tell the Austro-Hungarian Empire is lame. I'm just going to send them like a telegram that's just like uh, the old dick butt drawing. And, and I'm going to go like 90s internet with it, you know? And I'll just be like, <laughs> a fax. A lot of people are going to say faxes didn't exist in 1910. And I'll say you're wrong. They existed in the 1840s and 50s. Um, faxes have been around a long time. Now, they weren't good, but they existed. All right, so I have two more ships left in my build plan. I have eight battleships now, which is good. Uh, I need to make sure that my... Okay, these are being commissioned. And the other two... Wow, you put a slash in the name. Aquila Volante and Aquila Valeria. It's like, choose one guys they're like we're waiting until it comes out to see what which one we feel on they're workshopping a new name around we can't decide guys it'd be like ships coming down the dock and they're like we called it spirit of america but we're also thinking spirit of maryland and it's like choose the champagne bottle is swinging choose one they're like ah eh, eh. We put it up to a Twitter poll, and I'm like, well, it's going to be called Shippy McShipface. I will remove your choices. All right. Now, we've gotten pretty good into this explosives thing, which is pretty nice. I'm going to move into hull strengthening and armor quality and hull construction as much as possible. Just because I need to build bigger fucking boats, and I need to do it, like, right now. I also probably need to increase my shipyard size. Is a max shipyard size of 99,000 displaced tons too much for 1910? Maybe. But I don't care. Because I also intend to become an export power. So, I need to take whatever I think I need in shipyards and add two-thirds to it. 
So if I build a ship that's about 25 to 30,000 displaced tons, I need to have a shipyard that's about 100,000 tons. I want a shipyard that is bonkers over capacity. Because if the war starts and I have to suddenly fix 150,000 tons worth of stuff, I'm most of the way there. I'm looking forward, down the line. I'm planning for in excess of what I need. I know that sounds crazy, but it is what it is. All right, looks like uh, the Spanish are fighting, which is okay. They're moving down uh, Western Africa. I have the United States, which is becoming slowly belligerent toward me. Uh, I have Austro-Hungaria, which is definitely belligerent toward me. I'm continuing to expand my ship capacity because, yes. And then I am going to build, uh, let's see, in one month these will be commissioned and then I can overhaul all the Sforza classes at the same time, which will be a test of my RSO facilities. I want to see how they can handle because rebuilding ships is essentially the same as fixing them. So I want to see what capacity I have based off what I have designed. Ah, yes. Austro-Hungarian uh, Navy has ignored me. Italy is trying to push into deeper Africa. And it looks like the French are trying to take Tonkin. They're trying to hold on to their territorial ambitions, which is hilarious. This will only end in tears. You're not going to fight Vietnam and win. They may not win right away, Vietnam that is, but they will take their time. All right, let's get into this Forza and let's start tearing these apart to make them better. Then I will design a new generation of ships. All right, here we go. Now the Sforza has eight inch secondaries and 13 inch primary guns, which is pretty badass. These are very small dreadnoughts too. They're not that big, at least for what I'm intending. For this era, I would say they're pretty average. A lot of the dreadnoughts of the early teens and what have you were not that big. They, especially by later ships, they seem diminutive, to say the least. Uh, we're going to move to better shells if we can. All right, good. We saved a bit on uh, armor, or on weight, rather. But as you can see, the speed can be brought up. Yes, turbines are better. So these guys can now do 20, nope, 27 knots seems to be the limit without uh, hitting some hydrodynamic issues. So we're going to reinforce the fore and aft decks just to make this thing a little stronger. We're going to make the superstructure 3 inches because that's funny. And we're going to make the fore and aft belt 5 inches. Can I get that main deck 5 inches? Hell yes I can. And then main armor belt 14 inches. Yep. Okay. So then I can boost the Citadel armor to make up the, oh, the make up the rest. And yeah, this thing is now, holy shit. That is exactly what I'm doing. Tex, you could replace all of the superstructure. I could, but I won't. That sounds expensive. And also it would make it more top heavy. Also, I don't want to do an IJN Fuso and end up with Pagoda Mast Apocalypse. Seriously, every time I look at historical pictures of that boat, I get an anxiety attack. I'm like, please don't turn the boat. It'll roll over. Pagoda masts scare me. All right, let's refit the Sforzas. We have a lot of them, so this will be pricey. It will take two months to do to refit all of them, which is amazing. And it looks like I have built sufficient dockyard capacity to not kill my budget in doing this so I don't have to enlist an ocean of private dockyards to help me out here and then fuck it up, which is what they'll do. I'm also probably going to build a secondary destroyer squadron and I'm going to base them at Taranto so I can either swing west and be incredibly belligerent toward the Austro-Hungarians or I can go try to blockade Egypt and prevent people coming from the Suez and Red Sea and just say, the ocean is closed. I, I will do some very big angers. All right, let's see. Uh, telling Austro-Hungarians to fuck off. Wow, the United States sent me an ultimatum. Counteroffer, go to hell. How's that sound? Counteroffer, we're Italy. We're, our default state is belligerent. All right, let's see. America really not liking me so much. Austro-Hungarians hate me more, so I'm going to do my best to fuck with them. 
That's my objective, is to continue to be belligerent. All right, so the Sforza class should be almost ready, and as soon as they are, I should be fine. And then I will have 12 battleships. Yes, that is what we have now. We are mighty warriors on paper, and I need people to understand that is my only notion here. On paper, we have a military. The problem is, is that any ground attack is going to rely upon the Italian army, which has a uh, mixed, a mixed uh, history when it comes to more modern naval engagements. You have exceptionally elite forces like the Arditi and Gruppo Gustatori and all of these other things. And then you end up with, you know, the rest of them. And I'm not trying to make fun of the modern Italian military because they have some really robust dudes. Uh, but what I am chuckling at is when you look at historically this whole nation of empire building that comes out of here, you look at the Italian military in World War I and World War II. World War I, there's some brilliant fucking campaigns fought, but all of the spirit seems to fall out of them. And I think it's not a fault of the individual soldiers. I don't also attribute it to equipment. A lot of people say, oh, their equipment was terrible. It's like, no, I think it was leadership. I think they lacked dynamic generals. They lacked people who could actually make things work as well. By World War II, they didn't have the industrial uh, strength or built military material in order to capitalize on mobile warfare. They still had the relics of a colonial military, which don't help much. Believe it or not, when you go and watch the speeches made by Il Duce or Mussolini, you will find that in his parades, they try to focus on him a lot. Because if you bring the camera out, if you look at any of the wider shots, you'll realize a lot of the vehicles in the parades are police and fire trucks. Because he doesn't have the tanks and military equipment to parade by, it's largely a facade. It's kind of like when North Korea does parades, you know? You'll see that tractor pulling something, and you're like, oh, is that a Kubota tractor pulling a Sam? And you're like, shut up. It, how dare you? We're very strong. Don't make fun of us. All right, so we're getting into ammonium pick rate and many other fun things. Um, we're slowly starting to try to build better ships. We're slowly starting to get Krupp armor. Uh... Good old Krupp, the arms manufacturers of the world. I am now going to design a newer, a newer destroyer that I'm going to base out of Toronto uh, because I know I'm going to need it. Now I can build better dreadnoughts. Ooh, Giulio Cesare, that's a great name, and a ship. So we're going to get into. Looks like we're still limited on destroyer hulls uh, to the very base model we have. We can get up to 1,200 ton destroyers, which is fine. I could probably get these fuckers to 35 knots, which is cool. All right, we're going to put some basic engines in here. And by basic, I mean turbines. Because not everyone has actually switched over to turbines. A lot of people were like, I don't know. Those seem awfully expensive. Many people avoided turbines for the longest time because they were not convinced about their reliability. That's fine. There's always going to be people who lag behind because they lack faith. But, in many cases, you lack faith for good reasons. Because the last time the Navy tried something, it didn't work. Alright, so we have the front gun and the rear gun. Still excessive pitch and roll. And we're just going to put some torps here on the wings to drop torps in the water. And we got torp, 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 torp. This will be more than fine. Uh, we're going to do TNT bursting charges, 19-inch torpedoes. We're going to use heavy shells. Because even though we're just little bitty destroyers, I want to... S oh, no. Nope. Looks like we got to go to standard shells because fuck my plans, I guess. All right. Looks like I'm going to have to come a little bit down on the torpedo tonnage. Because the game is like, no. And that's fine because I can make up the rest in armor. I can make these destroyers tough enough to actually take a few bonks, uh, which will also help its uh, handling a little bit, right? A little bit. Not a lot, but a little bit. The idea is to make these ships work a little better in most weather. Let's see if I can get it to 36 knots. Yes, I can. 
37 knots? No, 37 is too many, but 36 is right on the money. Lampo? No. I'm going to call you Farto, which is American for farts. Then I'm going to send these things out. I think about 20, 30 of them ought to be enough for a quick response destroyer force. Uh, well, I develop better technology. All of these destroyers are essentially disposable. They are designed to be very fast, and that's about it. Um, I want the enemy to be terrified as they scream in, lay mines, and do everything else they need to do. So I'm going to build 30 of these guys, and I'm going to base them in Taranto. You may notice that it takes a lot longer to build these than it used to, because these things are a lot more complex. So it looks like I can now base these everywhere, uh, which is nice. Uh, but I'm going to probably just put them in Taranto. These guys are smaller. I can port them everywhere, like the Seychelles. I can put them in Sudan. I can put them in a lot of fun little places. You know what? You know what? You know what? I'm going to put them in Sicily. Sicily's nice. Messina, down here, allows me to just roll out. Taranto could actually get blockaded. Also, it is chock-fucking-full of boats right now, which I had forgotten. I, I had forgotten that I'd done that. So I'm going to move some of these ships, uh, not the battleships. I'm, I'm going to move a lot of these little guys over to the other ports as best I can so that when war starts, they can roll out a body and just go right into their face. That is that is the idea. I've got my battleships at Toronto. Because I was looking for Toronto, and I'm like, why can't I put people there? And they're like, fuck off, dockyard's full. Dockyard full, fuck off. Let's see. Oh, the Germans want to provoke me, which, why? What do you have to gain? Go away. We're your pals, sometimes, in words, sometimes. Sometimes. Not all the times. Can't be everybody's friend 24-7, but I mean, come on, really? Look, as soon as I build these Fardo class, I, I'll take anybody on. I'll just go over there and be extremely angry. I'll put unhappy faces on everything. I'll just go at them and I'll be like, hey, remember your knees? And they're like, no, not my knees. And then I'll break them. I, yeah, a lot of nice knees here. Pity if any should break. I'm also kind of alarmed because my armies are trying to take additional territories into Africa, which means they're probably going to bump into other naval powers, and then I'm going to have some problems. Looks like the United States is trying to gobble up the Banana Republics. Uh, France is just blazing across Africa. I control some ports, some ports, but not all the ports. And Mogadishu, uh, I don't really have many ports out here that have a lot of tonnage, uh, which is unfortunate because I can't really put much in terms of squadrons there. The African ports are typically not that great until you hold them for a while and slowly build them up. So you can put some things there but not many things there. And so you need to build essentially a bunch of little light torpedo boats to put in those waters to go be belligerent. Uh, but you're not going to be able to park your battleships there because it's not like the West African ports like Rabat and Casablanca, Algier, and Merzel Kabir. Those are actually okay ports. They're still not the equivalent of European ports, but they have enough tonnage for you to actually start repairing stuff. If you have a battleship in the Red Sea and it gets damaged and it has to go to, you know, like Port Sudan, you're going to be in trouble because it's going to be there for years as they try to figure it out. It is a pain in the ass with insufficient dockyard. You're going to end up with not a lot of shipkeeping capability in a lot of these colonial ports, if we may call them that. You're going to have to build stuff up. You're going to need massive dockyard facilities. It's gonna be it's gonna be a pain in the ass, more or less. Ah yes, my country is booming. Now here's what I'm gonna do. Watch this. I'm gonna take money out of naval funds and reinvest it in my GDP. I need the GDP to flourish. I need to make that line go up because that's where I take my taxes out of. So 
France is really making a lot of money. The United States is a third of what France is. Germany is down there with the U.S. Britain is way behind France. Austro-Hungary is not that great. However, Italy is twice the Soviet Union, four times what Spain is, and is above Japan. So I might be able to actually take Austro-Hungary. Maybe. Asterisk. This is a game of economies. So I need to make sure that I have some building plan to actually fight people. I'm also going to continue to increase tensions against the Austro-Hungarian Empire by threatening them. I'm going to threaten to embargo their noodles. I'm going to be like, hey, guess what? Go away. And they're going to go, I, that's not nice. And I'm going to be like, exactly. It's not nice. I don't like you. And they're going to go, that's mean. And I'm going to go, yep. I'm not a great diplomat. I'm probably going to need uh, somebody who is a little bit more poetic. You know, they're just going to say, I don't like anything you do, and everything you do, you do poorly. And they'll say that in a very poetic way that is worth mem remembering. Uh, if, if I was in charge of diplomacy, it would just say, fuck you, strong letter to follow. All right, I'm going to slowly start getting into better crop armor. We're going to start getting into better ship designs. We're going to have a lot of fun. By fun, I mean we're probably going to bankrupt Italy. But that's okay. That's okay. Sometimes countries go bankrupt. You just have an oopsie doodle and no one will loan you money for a while. Looks like no one wants to fight me. That damn. Come on. Come on. Don't you want to fight? Don't you wish to have engagement of violence? Not really. All right. I now have advanced dreadnoughts, which is cool. I'm also starting to try to upgrade all this other shit so that I can have, like, not crap hull construction techniques. Trying to shave time off of my shipyards. I need them to be faster. I need them to be more efficient. And I need them to be generally not crap. That is, that is my objective here. Italy has very good dockyards in this period. They sold a number of ships for export, uh, quite a few to the Greek Navy, if memory serves, to include their capital ship, which you can still go see today. But I need to make a navy that scares the enemy enough that they try not to bother me. The only issue I foresee is if I fight a major industrial power, like if I get into it with France, I am boned. They have ports everywhere. They have fleets everywhere. They have an enormous GDP. It's like, what, six times mine? It's going to be bad if I have to fight France. Because sure, I could take some of their ports from them. But they're going to be able to maintain continual pressure. And I also share a border with them. Which means that... They can just roll out of southern France into northwest Italy, and I am going to be turbo-boned because they will just be able to walk right in. I'm not saying my, my army won't stop them. I'm saying that they have enough axis of advance into my territory to make this miserable. They have ports in the Mediterranean on both sides. They have ports in the Atlantic. They have Pacific holdings. And they have a lot of African holdings. So they can constantly cycle ships in, have them repaired at dozens of ports, and then continually hit me. And if their ships are fast enough, they can just go around me. So I will be on a defensive footing, if not blockaded instantly. This could be a problem. So if I find a large power like France, my best option is going to be to go for the neck and fight as hard as I can, as brief as I can. I'm going to have to do a Admiral Yamato. I'm going to have to try to attempt the Japanese Kante Kessen, the, the absolute decisive moment, and I'm going to have to try to kill them as quickly as possible, because every month that war goes on is a month that I am losing. All right, looks like we finished our 30 new destroyers in Toronto. Excellent. Now, I need to start looking into a new pair of dreadnoughts. I'm probably going to have to figure out a new pair 
of dreadnoughts, and I'm also going to continue to try to train my navy so that they can hurt people more. Oh, all right. Britain conquered the Orange Free State in South Africa, so the Boer War played out, but certainly took a lot longer than it did in historical sense. So that is interesting. By interesting, I mean none of my business, and I am going to leave, yeah, I'm just going to leave them alone and say, oh, well, that's neat, and stay out of it. So I'm slowly building my dockyard size. Let's look. My navy is... Oh, we've moved up from cadets. We're now just green. Congratulations. We're adequate. Excellent. 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 All right. In four months, it looks like I will have some of the technology to build better steel, more consistent quality armor, and be able to limit the uh, overages of weight in built ships. This happens a lot in the real world. You'll have a ship that's designed to be 800 tons displacement. And it'll come out 880 tons displacement. Plus minus does happen quite frequently, even on that scale. So pay attention in math, please. All right, so I have 13-inch guns, which is... Eh, and I am now going to do my best to make things even better. Looks like we might be able to get into uh, some slightly better tech, but armor forging is what I'm waiting on. When it comes to large guns, it's going to take a while to engineer better ones, at least significantly better ones. We shall see. All right, where do we got? What do we got? What are we doing? All right, Spanish Empire is warning its people. Belgium wants to buy some destroyers. None of my business. I say yes, because why not? Let's go into our politics, and let's go fuck these guys up. All right, increase tension. Looks like the United States was slightly belligerent toward me, but they... Oh, they're still increasing belligerence. They're probably like those goddamn pasta eaters, and I'm like, you guys like pasta too, and they'll go, eh. Then I'll tell some bad dad jokes. I'll say like, hey, if a lady sleeps with you for Italian dinner, does that make her a prostitute? And people will just frown and downvote. Oh boy, the Spaniards are also provoking me a bit. The Ottoman Empire is taking control of the Balkans. So they are pushing up. Looks like Bulgaria might be next. And they took, they're took they trying to take the central Balkans away from Serbia. So this is an interesting time. Big guns. 14-inch guns, hell yes. I could be the first Navy in the world to use 14-inch guns in 1911. I'm gonna be nasty to people. I'm going to come off the ropes. I'm going to be a methamphetamine-fueled circus monkey. And it's all banana. I am going to be insane. I am going to be the Ayatollah of rock and roll. -a. I'm going to fight people probably very briefly but very, very angrily. Also, if I go to war with Austro-Hungary, I'm going to try to take away Croatia from them. Because I can. I'm going to go into Croatia and I'm going to take them ports because that will then limit their tonnage. Yes, they do have Albanian ports, but the Croatian ports are a lot better built up at this point. And I'm going to hurt them. As far as their other holdings, I realize they control Ukraine, which, while interesting... It's none of my business. I'm not going to go over there and take that away from them, but I may blockade it just to prevent them from getting anything out of it. Belgium is continuing to buy ships. We are at 10,000 of 267,000 possible shipbuilding capacity in tons. So that's not bad. We are slowly getting there in terms of advanced equipment. So good job us. I'm going to spend... A little bit of my research here and try to slowly get into better guns and gunnery uh, because I need to badly and I need to make sure that we have more than sufficient capacity for these new engines that we're putting in things before I design the new dreadnought that will probably bankrupt us. When it comes down to dreadnoughts, though, uh, we have now entered the era of super dreadnoughts. And super dreadnoughts is just kind of a naval term for anything that is a generation after dreadnoughts. Super dreadnoughts typically have super firing guns, which is the double decker guns, where you have a gun turret and behind it a superimposed gun turret. But that is not where super dreadnoughts comes from. Super dreadnoughts are called that typically 
because they have twice the firepower of the preceding century, or not preceding century, preceding generation's design. So it is a evolution of the idea. Minister of France, or finance, I was going to say, why is the Minister of France, who cares? Give me money. That's that's what I said to him. He's just like, I need, and I just yell, give me money. That's all I say. Give me money. I don't care what words come out of his mouth. Give me money. Give me money to make my boats. I'm just going to keep showing him the news that I wrote about Austro-Hungary. I'm going to be like, can you believe these guys? They're crazy. They have a million, million guns. All right, here we go. Let's build a new dreadnought. So, it looks like we have a nice hull design. Notice the total lack of casemates. So, we've moved, we've certainly moved into the 20s, if not the 30s, which is fun because we're in the teens. We're moving to 35,000 tons. So, we're pretty much in the 20s, at least by that. Let's try to do 26 knots as a standard speed. And we have a really decent range. Uh, by standard speed, I'm referring to the standard pattern of battleship, which was an American idea. Fleet standard. We got really good armor. We got really good torps. We have double hull. We have anti flooding measures. And we're starting to get into the citadel uh, of citadels. Oh man, look at this. That's way too tall. But hey, why not? Now we're just going to put this little guy here. There we go. And then we're going to put the funnel there. And we're going to do. Oh, 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 oh. All right. We, we need to move you forward. Funnel there. And then we're going to need to put that there. Good enough. Good enough. One smonk stack to rule them all. Don't worry, it'll still roll on coal, so it's going to make a lot of mistake. And by the way, you can see the uh, conning tower there, you know, with the rangefinder on top. So we're going to do a superimposed barbette, so we can have double gun in the front, and we're going to use these 14-inch guns that we just developed that nobody else has, and we're going to be like, LOL. Okay, that barbette is not enough to support it. It will crush it through the deck. So what we're going to need is an enlarged superimposed barbette, which is, which is definitely, definitely a step up. That is a lot of fucking metal. All right, let's do uh, there. And then there. All right, so superimposed guns, and you can actually see over it with a conning tower, so that's a plus. The pitch is excessive, but we'll iron it out somehow. All right, let's do an enlarged superimposed barbette, and we're going to try to do the same on the rear of the ship. I like how I dovetailed that in there, so that actually does look correct. And we're gonna try to do four double gun turrets here. Check that out. That is a sexy, sexy ship. Certainly looking a bit like the uh, Royal Navy designs that came out of the 20s and 30s. Starting to get into like Queen Elizabeth class and stuff. I got three torpedo tubes on each side for if them destroyers try to roll in and be belligerent, I can go no and smack their peepee. -pee. That is what you do. You just start launching torps when they start launching torps and they go, I didn't sign up for this. And I'm like, agreed. Now I hurt your feelings. So we're going to do a really heavy armor belt, but not so heavy that it's ridiculous like some of my earlier ships because, you know, heavy enough. Heavy enough is what we got. Now I'm going to need some secondaries to keep the torpedo boats away. Uh, five inch secondaries, four and a half. It's kind of light, but that's why we have much smaller secondaries like these little two inch guns that we can put up there and just kind of be fun little wing guns to shoot at destroyer boats and try to pick the captain off. And then I can also put tiny little guns out in the open if I want to kill some flag officers or let them pretend that they're helping. So there's some other little guns, anti-balloon guns, but I've taken the pitch down by more or less uh, increasing my, my good old armor. You can make the bottom of the boat heavier, and this makes things better. So that's what we do. We're going to go to 4.5 inch on the fore belt, and we're going to go to 4.5 inch on the aft belt. And we are almost on the money. So I'm going to increase the inner belt armor a little bit. 35,000 tons on the money. Not the best ship, but certainly probably one of the best 
in the Mediterranean at this time. And I'm going to call this one Gabagool. I know that's technically spelled Capicola, but I love the Sopranos. <laughs> My Italian friends are going to scream at me. And that's fine. That's fine. I enjoy it. Uh, they're going to be like, Tex, why? And I'll be like, ah, Gabagool, you know. Uh, Italian cold cuts. Good names for everything. All right. Where am I going to actually build these fucking things? Uh, what what has port facility? Okay, 87,000. Oh, Gaeta. You've got room. Hi, Gaeta. You're going to build four of these fucking monsters, and you're going to like it. How's that? They're going to say, please don't. I'll say, don't worry about it, Gabagool. Think of the work. Think of all the work that you have now. They're like, you're bankrupting the town. We're out of steel. We can't even get basic bathroom fixtures now. And I'm like, ah, transport. All right. So I'm on the edge of war here. This is going to be potentially a bad one. And that's okay. That's okay. What we're going to have to do is we're going to have to fight one guy and then watch our little diplomacy wheel because we are going to have some problems. Uh, the Austro-Hungarian Empire is definitely biting at the bit. Uh, the United States is headed that way. So I'm going to improve relations with the United States and watch everyone else like a hawk because inevitably, inevitably, the <laughs> the enemies do dogpile you. They go, I could take him. And they start getting into this idea of being able to smash you. And they will. They will absolutely smash your shit in. Because they realize you're weak. You are overextended. You have too many enemies. You can't defend all your ports. So you'll end up in a war with, like, France. And then Spain goes, you know what? I can take Sardinia. And you're like, oh, crap. And you end up fighting them for it. Venezuela is buying a lot of stuff, uh, which is interesting. That's interesting. So they're buying lots of little ships, which is heartening. It looks like they haven't bought into that whole dreadnought race yet. France has 329 ships to include 17 battleships, 63 heavy cruisers, 95 light cruisers. Yeah, fighting them would be a nightmare. Because you'd fight them, you'd sink a few ships, and then the next fleet comes in, and then the next fleet comes in, and then the next fleet comes in, and six to eight engagements later, he still has fleets and you don't. This is that whole in-squared law of shipbuilding, where you go out with 100 ships and they go out with 100 ships, and if you both kill as many ships as you lose, if you have more ships, then you win by default. And you have to presume the enemy has the same capabilities that you do. Never, ever, ever think that the enemy is dumber than you are. That's how you lose. That's how you lose really, really badly. So, Cordite. Ooh, we're going to get into Cordite. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Nobel. We're going to start getting into Cordite, and then I'm probably going to also just put tech into big guns. Because if I can make sure that I have bigger guns than the enemy, that are more accurate, I can then do standoff against the enemy. Meaning, I see him at 20 clicks, and I start hitting him at 20 clicks. And he has to advance to 12 or 11 in order to start bracketing me with salvos. So essentially, I have room. If I can do that plus speed, I can keep him at a range. So I can then choose my way of running and fighting. I can enjoy maneuverability. All right. The, oh yeah, Austro-Hungary is not getting happy. They are certainly going down the road to war. So in the meantime, I'm going to keep trying to be nice to the U.S. I'm going to send them olive oil I'm going to send them nice pictures of cats and stuff. And I'll be like, you guys like cats. And they're going to go, who the fuck are you? And I'm like, Italy. I'm everyone's favorite forgotten naval power. The Regia Marina has boats. That's probably what it says on their motto. We have boats. All right, what are we doing? 
I could build larger cruisers, but why? It's like, for three quarters the cost of a battleship, buy a battleship. All right, we're going to try to get better guns and better guns and better guns. That We're going to need that. I'm also going to get into hull strengthening as much as possible just to be an asshole. Politics. Let's go down into the dreaded politics and let's increase tension. We're going to squeeze their balls. They're going to be like, hey, guess what? They're going to go, what? And I'll be like, you're dumb. Strong letter to follow. I'm going to instruct my ambassador to shit on their porch. I'll be like, eat a big breakfast. You're going to need it. Then we're going to fight them. We're going to fight them as much as possible. Ah, yes. I'm getting... Oh, shit. We just sold a battleship, which is nice, but that could be problematic. Because uh, we are at three quarters of our shipbuilding capacity, so I'm going to keep building as best I can. My navy is not that big. So losing a handful of battleships in this could also destroy my navy through brain drain. I end up losing the technological capability of maintaining my fleet, but also just the numbers to staff them, which is not great. I'm going to get rid of my older stuff just because I need to keep pace with things. Now, if the enemy starts to use a large number of light surface combatants, it's always good to have some research into lighter guns and as well a light cruiser because you can make an anti-destroyer light cruiser very easily and they're not that expensive. You just put a lot of light guns on it, don't worry about torpedoes, put decent range finders and then just chase them down and bully them. It's quite good. Belgium's buying a lot of destroyers for some reason. What are you doing, Belgium? What are you doing? What's going on in 1010 land? Something I need to know? Are you going to start fucking up the Congo again? Because I don't think the world needs that right now. I think we have enough problems. Alright, let's see where things stabilize. 168 destroyers and 12 battleships, plus another 4 on order. I should be able to face roll Austro-Hungary on paper. Potentially. Potentially. <laughs> we'll see. Ooh, now I can build Destroyer too, Son of Destroyer. Actually, I'm very slow on getting new Destroyer. Oh, no. Vanuatu. No, I'm not going to the Pacific. They're like, we think that they're bad. And I'm like, well, they're all the way over there, and they don't have a navy. So I don't want a Pacific holding, and I don't want to bankrupt our operations budget by pretending that we're a Pacific power. Why in the fuck... Would you bring that to my desk? Get out. I'd have people throw tomatoes at that guy. I'd be like, get fucked. Get out of my office. Vanuatu. Good lord. Yes, let's go take on Micronesia. Actually, it sounds like something the Italian Navy would do in this time period. You're like, we're going to become a Pacific power. And everyone in Europe stares at them because they all have Pacific holdings and they're like, what do you mean? And they're like, we're going to take on Vanuatu. And everyone just starts laughing and is like, you should do that, Italy. Uh-oh. There is civil unrest in the Spanish Empire that is mentioned in several newspapers. The Austro-Hungarian Empire is behind this. That's what I'm going to tell people. It's them damn Habsburgs. They control everything. It's what they do. All right, 10 months I will have my four Gabagool class ships. So I'm going to I'm going to see what happens. I will eventually replace my navy eventually uh with probably something like modernized super dreadnoughts. But we'll see. What I do love about this game is it does allow you to build modernized dreadnought hulls. As an interim measure, they start to show up in the 20s roughly in the tech base, but I am kind of speedrunning this in terms of certain hull designs. So what you're seeing is not necessarily what was available in these various timelines. Also, the Chinese Navy is off of eastern Sicily. I don't know how they managed to get over here, but they are very low on fuel. All right. Oh, man. Oh, man. You know what? I'm going to yell at the Austro-Hungarian. Yep, there we go. America's trying to take care of Peru, which is Jesus Christ. Why? Why would you do that? Why would you, you know, I mean, they're doing that whole America's backyard thing. 
uh, really, 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 really angrily. I mean, there's Monroe Doctrine, but holy shit, guys. I mean, hold on. Let's go take a look. As America's got Panama, looks like they failed to capture a lot of this, but they're going after Peru right now, which is, wow. Brazil's doing all right. Uh, Africa is largely French and some Spanish. Germans controlled Southwest, which is what they did historically. Uh, let's go look at, okay, Spain has managed to hold on to everything but the Philippines, which has gotten independent, which is interesting. Germany, of course, holding off on the Eastern Solomons and the Brits, everything else with some Dutch in here. Japan hasn't changed much. The Soviet Union hasn't changed much, except they lost uh, Ukraine to the Austro-Hungarian Empire, which is why, why? All right, because wacky history. Ottomans are slowly pushing up and might try to get Bulgaria or Romania next. So we'll see what happens. Then there's little old Italy. I control the bare minimum of African holdings. I control a few things. All right. <laughs> oh, man. Looks like the Austro-Hungarians are expanding again. France took the Cook Islands. Okay. France has really beaten the shit out of old Blighty today. Yeah, their GDP is soaring, which is scary. Uh, that is that is like not good. That is not good at all. I I need to be ready to fight France because they're probably gonna try to seize my ports. They're they're not they're not nice today. So yeah, fuck. All right, all right, all right, all right. I know who I'm gonna fight. I know who Captain Belligerence is, and it's not me this time. <laughs> uh, crap. Why is France so ascendant as a power? All right. So here's what I'm gonna do. If I go to war with France, I'm gonna try to take their Mediterranean holdings south, and I might take. Well, I'm gonna have to think about this. Because they could easily just take my territory. They have a lot of military forces. Uh, America doesn't seem interested in having a war. I probably need to take these ports. Just to boost my shipbuilding capacity. And it looks like the Austro-Hungarian Empire is fucking around in the Black Sea. Doing shit out there. Which is not good. That's not great at all. Why? Austro-Hungary is growing as well, so I need to check them uh, before they wreck them. Get it? Because the Czech Republic, Czech, actually that'd be Bohemia Moravia up there. But yeah, crap. These guys are pretty tough right now. So I, I have become a minor power by just not being belligerent uh, enough. I will correct this defect because Austro-Hungary is a very hard nation to play as in this game. They have very limited ports, they're very easy to mine, they're very easy to interdict, and they're very, very easy, very, very easy to, uh, to bottle up. So, not great. I'm going to keep improving relations with the U.S. France doesn't seem to notice me yet. Notice I'm saying yet. I'm, I'm a little bit worried. However, I will unlock the ability to make additional small battleships, which may be an interim measure I need. I may design an austerity class ship that I can use to mass produce and export, but not only that, serve as kind of a yardstick for the Mediterranean, something that I don't operate out on the Atlantic or in the Pacific fleets, but something I could actually move into the Red Sea contest the Suez with, bomb the Turks with, something that is good for my backyard. Okay, we now have centralized fire control, which is cheating, which is should help us out quite a bit. All right, we're going to try to get into hull construction techniques because we really need them. We need quality control badly. I'm also going to try to get into engine and boiler. Actually, you know what? I'm going to keep that where it is because that's just going to get really expensive. All right, we're going to try to get into armor quality and forging then, uh, just to get our metallurgy up good enough to where our armor is significantly lighter, significantly harder, and even though it is ruinously more expensive, 
It will ensure that my ships don't take critical damage, because yes, while armor is pricey, a blown-up ship is more pricey. Well, not really. It, it, it's no longer in your budget, but you know what I mean. Okay, let's see. It's about time to pull the lever on this. And we're starting to get into how much longer until the Gabagool is ready. Five months, plus probably another three of outfitting. So eight months on the outside. Just in time for the eve of conflict. My naval funds are massively, massively uh, surplus. So this is good. I can run this at a deficit forever. You'll need it, especially if you get blockaded. You'll find that your funds just disappear and your economy collapses. All right, war with Austro-Hungary. All right, let's do this. Let's do this. Now, my next step is to make sure that nobody else hates me for as much as possible. I'm going to go to France and I'm going to be like, you guys are cool. Uh, we both make wine. I'll tell the French that wine is better. And they'll clap because they like that. I'm going to send my whole navy right across to just hurt their feelings. All right. And then I'm going to send my battleships in right here at the mouth of the Ionian Sea. And then I'm going to take, let's see. Uh, no, those are under construction. And there, there's the other seven battleships. I'm going to move these off Crete so I can prevent them from bringing reinforcements up. And I'm going to try to move the rest of my destroyer squadron up here near the Bosphorus so that I can be incredibly belligerent. And I'm going to move another destroyer squadron further in. And I am going to just pretty much cruise control for cool while I have a bunch of fleet in standby. Also, the Messina fleet, uh, I'm going to put here in the Aegean Sea just to let people know what's up. And the yeah, all right, cool. Let's do this. We should be able to blockade them. Uh, hopefully, we should be able to blockade them. We'll see. Yes, we have blockade. We are blockading them. Bene, as the Italians say. All right, let me make sure I emptied. Oh, yeah. Um... Yeah, I'm going to tell the Soviet Union we're cool, and we signed a treaty with them, so they're now our pal. Probably because the Soviet Union wants, uh, wants Ukraine back, so we'll see. All right, so the Gibraltar fleet is hanging out. What are you doing in Malay, scrap? All right, uh, let's see. Gibraltar fleet. I'm getting rid of some of the older ships that are just sitting around uh, in ports they shouldn't be in. Because no. And some of these other African port ships that were never modernized. Getting them off my books. Because as soon as the war ends, I will disperse uh, the surviving ships to those ports again. And uh, letting them do whatever. Alright, here we go. We now have blockading power projection against the enemy, so I can crush their empire slowly. Let's see what they do maneuver-wise. It looks like we're going overland into Austria from the Alps, so that's pretty badass. And I have a lot of battles now. So their navy is not afraid. They are coming out to fight. However, I have new battleships coming, and they don't. So this is potentially going to work out in my favor. As soon as these new battleships are done, the Gabagool class, I'm going to do my best to build a series of austerity ships, as I said, which they may only be kind of like enlarged Mikasa ships, where you have just one gun turret fore and aft, but a crap ton of armor. Okay, the German Empire is supporting us. All right, sank some of the transports. It's a giant fight versus that one ship. Did damage to that. All right, let's go sink a battleship, boys. Let's go drill it home into these Habsburgs. Who wears the pants? And whose pants are fancier? Okay, that is a fairly modern-looking battleship. They have one destroyer and one torpedo boat with it. Versus 14 destroyers. All right, step one. Form the Conga Line of Doom. Uh, you know what? I don't care about that. Ahead and 33 knots. Good enough for me. 
H-E and let's do this. Southeast, southeast. There they are. We spotted them. Straight at them, boys. Please don't ram each other that much. That's really expensive. Don't do it. Don't. Oh, my God. They're just. All right. You know what? You guys. You guys. You guys acting so crazy. All right, we're going to try to get this battleship, because if we can sink a battleship on day one of the war, that makes us really cool. Quit ramming each other. It's not good for the paint. All right, so these guys are going in. Now, you may notice they wobble a bit. They do that. All right, there's his battleship. That is a big fucker. What are we looking at here? Holy crap, mother of all wing guns. He... Okay, we need to sink this bastard. Yeah, he's got a modern battleship here. At least for the era. And I don't like it. We need to make it dead. Alright, smonk, boys. Alright, they're sending a torpedo boat versus me. Alright. My guys just dropped a ocean of torps at him. Probably not a good idea. All right, yep, let's go ahead and take it. Don't want to break formation. Now you may notice my torpedo boats seem largely impervious to torpedoes. Overbuilding is cool. It also breaks the enemy morale. Okay, it's a 21,000 displaced ton battleships. Looks like it's got 10 inch guns all the way around. That is a lot of firepower, especially for this era. And he is keeping... Ow! Well, guess what? I may have blown my load on torpedoes. But I ha... I am a torpedo. Ow, it ricocheted. That does feel good. My guy's falling out of formation because he's taking excessive damage. Which does happen. Alright. Eh, he's leaving. I want to torp this guy. I want to torp him real bad. All right, let's try to get into point-blank torp range and make some magic happen. There we go, torps in the water. Oh, yes, two hits. All right, second ship has fallen out of formation. Third ship has fallen out of formation. This is like a Death Star trench run here. Okay, let's drop some rounds in the water. He's shooting torps at my guys, but fuck him. Come on. Italio Baglioni, come on! Oh no, sorry, Bagnolini. Torps away, torps away, all four in the water. All four hit. Oh, he is in a bad way right now. His torp boats are trying to drop torps on my torp boats. We're just dropping torps all over the place. Oh, hell yes. Three more hits. Three more hits, three more hits. Flash fire. Hell yes. All right, he's sinking. San Pietro just rammed their destroyer, which is cool. Now let's sink that destroyer. And then we'll let the torpedo boat carry their fate. Oh, hell yeah. We keep hitting them with torpedoes. That thing had a thousand dudes on board. Had. Welcome to the war, Hungary. <laughs> Alright, my destroyers are coming in. And, uh... Man, they are fast. Time compression is crazy. Makes them look like they're doing a million miles an hour. Also, I may torp myself here, so let's try not to do that. Oh, looks like they hit him with more torps. Pandur is sinking. What is he sinking about? Probably the ocean. I just torp myself a little bit. Not a lot. Alright. Go us. 
All right, let's just head back out to open sea. I still have all of my torpedo boats. Enemy smoke smotted to the southeast? I don't care. I'm just going to let him get away with it. It's just a torpedo boat. I'll let him do his thing. I'll be like, you can go into the ocean and die. We win. We're leaving. The Italian Navy does what it does best. We show up and we hurt their feelings. And then we lay smonk. A little bit of smonk never hurt nobody. Actually, it has. It's hurt a lot of people. Don't believe me. Well, time to leave. Now that we've done our part. See you later. See you later, losers. Conga line of death heads back to Italy. So, pretty good first day of the war. Pretty good first day of the war. <laughs> Show up, sink battleship, refuse to elaborate. Have fast as fuck boats. The enemy's like, why? Why have you done this? And I'm like, I don't know. You know, that's how we play things. Oh, wow. Yep. All right. Sink that torpedo boat. All right, so my guys are starting a invasion. We're trying to get into Austria with our armies, which is pretty baller. I want to see if the second the second fight is any better than the first. Looks like my battleships are also moving to fitting out. So this is a bad time for them because they've just lost some significant surface combatants. And now they, they're being blockaded, and they heard that I'm building four more ships. So they realize that I can start to apply enormous pressure to them. The problem is, is if I have a second front open up. If a second front opens up, I am cinnamon toast fucked. It is not a good time. Fighting two navies is very hard. The most I've ever fought in this game successfully is five and even then, it was a slog. It was basically shooting and maneuvering my way out of every fight I could that as soon as I realized they started to get hits, I had to leave. Because as soon as you start overcommitting, you will take so much damage that you are incapable of having another fight. So you have to fight and then run, fight and then run, fight and then run. So rather than having decisive naval battles, you start grinding them down with naval attrition. You're going... I destroyed a cruiser and I only damaged that battleship. But your battleships can escape and that is what you need to have happen. All right, let's sink these four cruisers, shall we? I think this will be a really, really good time. And by a good time, I mean for Italy, not for them. They're going to have a really bad time. They're going to put their uh, sunglasses on and it's going to be, oh God, why? And I'll be like, the Italian sun is in your eyes. Or something cool. Wow, that looks like a toy boat. I don't like it. Alright, you know what? Let's do line abreast and uh, aggressive as shit torpedo attack and use whatever you want. And yeah, alright. Remember, violence of action carries the day. That's, that's what you have to remember. Please don't ram each other. Just don't do it. Guys, damn it. We're trying to show off for the internet, people, and you're embarrassing me. Okay. Quit going bonk. Damn it, Italy. You had one job. Be glorious. All right, let's go find these heavy cruisers. There they are. So I'm going to try to approach them a little bit, about 20 to 30 degrees off their intended course, so I can kind of radically cross the T, but I'm also looking at laying down an ocean of torpedoes at them. My torpedoes, because they are fancier, uh, have a 5 kilometer range, which is pretty alright. Now notice they're turning to leave, so that is telling. 
They're also probably turning to present the bulk of their secondary battery toward me. So I'm going to go ahead and just start throwing torps at them because they are maneuvering in turn. That means they are not abreast, they are in a line. Each of them is assuming the position the last one did as they turn. Except for that guy. Now they're going crazy because they see the torpedoes. Excellent. Alright, my torpedo boats are coming in just to be an asshole. Alright, we're gonna switch to a line ahead and have my guys fold in so we can get good shots on them. They are concentrating fire on the boat in the lead even though he's already blown his load. This is a mistake. I'm gonna try to do what I can to corral them in as they watch this fog bank approach at 30 something knots and they're like, why? And I'm like, Italy. So he has eight inch guns on what is only a nearly a 4,000 ton ship, which is terrifying. He also has a lot of anti-torpedo boat guns at about a three inch gun, so. Almost like a 70 something millimeter gun for his secondaries. And then the eight inch, uh, that, is, that is up there. It's actually fairly modern, as uh, cruiser guns go. At least by modern, I mean World War II standard. Alright, I have torps coming in from a lot of angles here. They are concentrating on my boy in the front. And my guys are just beating the piss out of them. With light guns. It looks like we're going to surround them, which is what we need to do. Don't, don't, no, bad. Oh, God. All right, I just got torped. He's shooting back now. And that's fine. That's fine for now. All right, he's launching torps into my dudes. And we're all cruising in as best we can. My guys are going to do their best to just start laying torps into these dudes. Yes, we're starting to get some hits. Each of these cruisers has almost 400 guys on it. So I'm just going to cause as many mass casualties as possible, which is kind of on, on point, on theme. All their fancy maneuvering has not helped them that much. You can also still see the remnants of my torpedo attack passing through their formation. But they are losing plenty of ships, or at least plenty of their ships, to this sort of withering fire. My guys are doing hit and fade, they're crisscrossing well, and they're forcing the enemy to maneuver back continually onto themselves in order to try to avoid, which is fine. My feelings. These torpedo boats are holding up pretty good, though. They're using almost their full torpedo load. I'm going to tell my guys to use normal uh, torpedo launch priority. All right. Yep. We've got some damage done to them, but nothing sunk yet. We managed to hit. We managed to hit and fade. Now, if I left right now, they would have to probably spend. Oh uh, God. Six to eight months fixing most of these, which is fine, because if you can keep doing this, their shipyards fill up with ships that they can't use, which is quite good. All right, I'm going to tell them to stop avoiding torpedoes. You guys have driven for like 20 clicks in the wrong direction. Attilio Bag Bagnolini, San Pietro, Pietro Mica, Francesco Nullo, Granatieri. Giuseppe Missiori, or Giuseppe, I'm not sure, I always fuck that up. Giacinto Polino, Sparide, Macale. All right, we're gonna go back in for more torpedo. He still hasn't managed to really do much to my torpedo boys, who are going to go in for another heap and helping of fun. And he's like, please, no, and I'm like, please, yes. Oh, this guy's coming in. He doesn't give a fuck. He's like, hey. Hey, how's it going? Uh-huh. Scrape. All right. That's that's how you do it. 
Extreme belligerence at high speed. All right, low fuel. He is also sinking. A lot of these, a lot of these cruisers are having trouble. Um, they're having progressive flooding events, as they like to say. That means sinking. All right, my guys have laid some torps, which are going toward the guy over there who's already almost in the drink. Looks like we're running out of ammo for one of the main gun loads, which is fine. We've been just chucking shells at him the whole time. All right, my guy's trying to make a really educated torpedo shot here. This guy's almost certainly gonna turn. So that's why you drop a second set. Never blow your whole load at once. Fire, wait, 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 then fire again. Okay, that one exploded on its own. Torpedoes of this era typically do that. They're not that great. Oh, he's dodging them. He's got torpedo beats. He's doing that initial D shit. I may torpedo my own guy here, which would be hilarious. Alright, overpin and flooding. Good. Yeah, it looks like I did torpedo my own guy. I'm dodging his torpedo because I am one. Here we go. Have some of that. Open them frames to the ocean. Let the water in. Oh god. Ow. Here comes the rest of the battle line in again. Okay, we got him. Good hits, boys. Turns out we need to release torpedoes at five feet. Which is fine, we can do that. Oh man, he is really throwing shells at me. But that heavy armor is working out for my torpedo boats. He's like, ugh. Why did the secondaries do almost nothing? It's like, well, you can set them on fire, but they don't care. They're used to it. Their mom hit them harder. They're like, please don't hurt me. I'm like, yes, I will. Yes, I will. Alright, two cruisers left. Let's make this happen. They're managing to splash shells and burning some of my ships down, in addition to them ramming each other, them being rammed, and then torping each other. This happens. Their exuberance will be their downfall. I also have to start using this to... See, there's some torps coming in right there. And here's some more right here. I'm also going to ram them should they try to leave. Oh, this is bad. That's a lot for him. Uh-huh. No, 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 no. Go ahead. You missed. I won't. Because I'm going to hit you with a ship. There we go. Have some scrapes. My whole fleet is disposable. This is the low end of Hilo doing its job. He's on fire. He's burning. He's got uh, water coming in. Looks like my torp boats are mostly out of torpedoes, however, Giuseppe is coming in here. And he has some torps left, but he's running out of main gun ammo. We have almost six inch guns on this, which is pretty alright. Alright, everybody, let's switch to HE. If we have HE. Do we not? Damn. He's like, please leave me alone. I'm like, no. How about no? How about we're just going to have a carousel of guys rolling by with torps? Uh, see, actually, only one of them has torps left. Giuseppe. Uh, Giacchino is out. Uh, Pietro Mica is out. Uh, yeah, out. Out. So we have one guy with torps left, which if he doesn't fuck this up, we should have this guy down. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Here we go. Here we go. I'm going to leave some smonk just to make this thematic. 
you know, they lay a nice little fog bank and then I come through it and they're like, oh, and I'm like, yeah, exactly. It's cool. And it's neat. It's like pulling, pulling back a cape to reveal you have a sword or something. Is it smart? Yeah. But is it cool? Yes. You gotta have a thematic navy, right? Attack them like a Shriner convention. Bunch of little cars, funny hats, the whole nine yards. Alright, we're gonna do a series of drive-bys. He's like, please stop. And I'm like, no. I will do no such thing. He's got low fuel. He's got plenty of ammo. He's still got torps on board. But he's got an engine out. The rear tower's burned down. He has uh, a frame just for of his engine room that is flooded up. So that'd be one of the boiler spaces. Looks like one of his torps exploded, which can happen. Oh, wow. That's a terrible torpedo launch. That's not mine. That's his. For once. Okay, so Giuseppe Missouri. Ow. Has some torpedoes left. However, he has just taken a really bad hit. I'm hoping he launches torps before he sinks. Probably not. But maybe so. I might just let this cruiser go. Something tells me I shouldn't. Giuseppe, you're sinking with torpedoes on board. That's not allowed. That's very wasteful. He's like, please, please just let me go to my Austrian-Hungarian family. Come on, make that torpedo shot. Aggressive, you can do it. I know you can. I know you got an engine out. I know you can make it. He's sinking already. You can claim you did it. Ah, he, he fired him. He fired him. So as soon as those torpedoes hit, we'll be like, you sank him! Good job, Giuseppe. Alright, so that's exactly what we want. We just need to be very, very mean toward them. And uh, continue this wave of belligerence. Because as many ships as I can sink will force their hand. Then I will take some ports away from them using my battleship fleet, which is mostly adequate. And by mostly adequate, I mean three out of five. I, I know that other navies probably... No, we're not going to accept a surrender. I'm sorry, but we started this and we intend to see it through. They're going to go, why? And I'll be like, war never changes. Uh, so, let's get in to make sure... Is anyone else mad at me? Is anyone? Oh, Germans. Let's make them happy. Because if not, we'll regret it. Um, let's see. What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? All right. So I have all my Gibraltar fleet. They're just hanging out. I need them to actually be uh, not in 85 different naval status statuses. I'm just going to put them all on. Sit in the port and wait for orders. Zero months until Gabagool is ready. And once Gabagool is ready... I can then put them into action in the Ionian Sea. I'm going to crush the Austro-Hungarian Navy. I want them to sink. I want them to have no boats left. I've also got them bottled up in the Black Sea, which is exactly what I want. Looks like we have a lot of meeting engagements. I'm hoping for an actual surface combatant fight. I want them to burn. I want them to burn down. I want them to scream and cry havoc. All right, so Soviet Union took Kyrgyzstan. Uh, yep, failed negotiations between our countries. I'm just going to auto-resolve that. Yeah, because we have plenty of torpedo boats. I'm going to auto-resolve that because we have plenty of torpedo boats. Ah, 
Time to bring out the Sforza. I need to see how these things work, but I need another one-sided battle just to make me feel better for this episode, because it was a lot of naval planning and unfortunately not a lot of naval action. And again, this is called Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts and not Scream, Fight, Shoot, Shit. Which I suppose would probably sell as a title these days. Don't you have phones? Oh man, look at that. It's got that wobble. Oh. Uh -huh. Okido, Northwest. So this is our design that has the 13 inch 4.5 guns and then everything else are dual 8 inch mounts plus a smattering of secondary 2 inch guns. This is a fine arrangement of armaments, but I just wouldn't want to be in this rear control tower. What with the smonk going through it as a design basis? Mmm, coal. Alright, where are they? Where are they? Bring me victims. All right, they've been spotted to the north. That's fine. My ships are actually quite fast. These can do 27 knots, which is really good for this era. And by that, I mean it's really okay. Rolling, 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 rolling. Oh, there we go. There we go. Ah, yes. Naval supremacy. We don't know what it is, but put rounds on it. What's that? I don't like it. They're out there. I don't want them to be. All right. We need to check our Jane's fighting ships in order to figure out what these things are. Well, never mind. Uh, it, it was a it was a ship. It, it's um, it's upside down now. It's on fire. It's hard to tell. All right, let's come on down to combat speed, so we can give our guys a little bit less vibration. Oh. Okay. You gonna lay that smoke down, are you? Yeah, see, there goes his submarine. I mean, ship. And, uh, yeah. Alright, what do we got? What do we got? Leon Triomfante has spotted question marks. Actually, it's not Leon, it's Leone. I'm going to get a lot of correction on pronunciation in the credits. People are gonna say, you don't even speak Italian. I'm like, correct, I don't. I can read some of it. And that's just from researching the Papal States, which is... Papal States Italy is hilarious. All right. Oh, no. Leave me alone. Leave me alone or I'll hurt you. You're like, is that a light cruiser? Is that a torpedo boat? We don't know. Better hit it with an 8-inch gun, just to be sure. Yep, that was a torpedo boat. All right, light cruiser. No. Don't do it. Oh, it's named the Trabant. Yeah, we gotta sink that thing. Appears our gunnery is not excellent, but it's pretty okay today. Ooh, that's a hit. Good job, guys. You made Austro-Hungary proud. Well, zero losses. That's how you want to do it. Nobody died. Only people's feelings were hurt. The most trauma we have is from watching their navy explode. <laughs> oh, boy. What a day. 
Well, there goes the Austro-Hungarian Navy. I'm going to have these battleships just... Yeah, that was that was just seal clubbing. That is not good. All right, so uh, let's see. We've got this other impetuoso being worked on. Livorno, uh -huh, uh -huh. Gaeta. Okay, the Gabagool class. Uh, I'm going to move you into the Adriatic. Now, we have room in our dockyards. And we are at war, which means... We can get away with a lot, which means we need a new ship, don't we? Let's all go down and do that thing I thought I was going to do, which is we go ahead and we say, oh, wow, we got, oh, it's not going to let me build a small dreadnought. Is it not? Well, I can always just build one anyways. There we go. It's, yeah, uh, we, we will call you a pico. You are, you are little. And we're just going to do uh, 24 knots. There we go. And it, it should be all right. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. We're going to do induced. We're going to do shaft. We're going to do crop. We're going to do anti-torpedo. We're going to do double. We're going to do reinforced bulkheads. Anti-flooding citadel. Tall advanced tower. Yes, 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 yes. This is going to be a small battleship, even though this is still bigger than anything else anyone else is building. Which is cool. It, it, it's nice to say that's my small battleship when they see things and they go, what, what do you mean that's your small battleship? And I'll go, shut up. It's, it's my small one. All right, centerline guns, we'll put 14-inch guns on this four and a half because why not? And then, uh, yeah, we'll just, uh, let's see, eight-inch secondaries, can I get those on here? I bet I could. Yep. Eight inch secondaries, and then I can do even more secondaries, right? So then we just do five inch guns, and we put some there. We put some there, right? And we put some there. Yeah, okay. Now we have an escort class battleship. Some people are going to scream and say, Texas, not a thing. And I say, it could be. It could be if you opened your heart to possibilities. You can escort a battleship with battleships. Someone's going to start screaming. It's okay. It's okay to be afraid of progress. <laughs> All right. So let's make this cancer. 16-inch belt, 6-inch, uh, 6-inch, and then 6-inch main deck. Then 4-deck, 6-inch, and aft deck, 6-inch. Hell yeah. Conning tower. Let's do an 18-inch conning tower. And then inner deck, let's do an inch and then inner belt four inches, right? And then I'll just take that up 1.3. Yeah, you know what? Four deck and half deck can be five inches because I'll put the rest in the inner deck belt there. And holy crap, what a ship, right? 1.5. There we go. What a good boat. Yes, Pico. So these little guys are going to be the bane of the Mediterranean. I am going to try to build eight. Will this bankrupt me? Perhaps. Will it be worth it? Yes. What I'm going to do after this, though, is I will probably get rid of a lot of my destroyers and just start slowly building ridiculous battleships and using those as the sole yardstick of my Mediterranean operations and then building destroyer fleets as I need them. So when I start sizing up opponents or need to do station keeping with old stuff. Now, the Pico is... Almost as much as the Gabagool. So remember that thing where I said I was going to build a lot of them? That's not going to happen. Ah, uh, crap. That's fine. That's fine. Just, it's going to take a minute. I'm, I'll, I'll build eight. I'll build eight. How does that sound? I will build eight of them. And then I will use them as uh, fun little belligerents. What I do need, though, is bigger guns, more accurate guns, and then perhaps I need to start getting into battle cruisers. Battle cruisers can be very, very fast. And they can be very, very fun. And fun is important. So I'm going to go ahead and build some of these. They are 7,000 tons lighter than the Gabagool. So we'll do that. We got the Pico class. And we're going to go ahead and build all these fuckers. And let's see. What is La Spezia? They're open. To see how much bankrupt this is. Yeah, all right. We're going to be poor for a while, but it's okay. I'm just going to say that. I'll keep repeating it. It's okay. Need to increase my transport capacity and prime my crew training a bit. 
Uh, it's going to take a while to build these. And by that I mean 19 months. That's fine. I'm also building ships for other nations, which is pretty okay. But yeah, looks like it's time for the Austro-Hungarian Empire to fall. But on that note, I'm going to take off, and I'll see you guys next time. Take care of each other. When we build up, I know I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be the best warship was built for you. When we set out, I know I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be the best warship that sails for you. When we spot them, I know I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be the best warship that will take point. And if we take heat, I know I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be the best warship to take the heat. Oh, I would block 800 rounds And I could block 800 more Just to be the ship that took 1600 rounds And sunk them down below When we're working, I know I'm gonna be I'm gonna be the warship working hard for you And when the fleet comes, I know I'm gonna block I'm gonna block every round they ever throw when we take heat, when we take heat, you know I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be the ship that comes down to save you. And if they sink me, well you know I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be the ship that takes one more with me. Cause I, I would block 800 rounds and I could block 800 more Just to be the ship that took 1600 rounds before 